All right, Adrian, so let's look at number three is the first one you asked about. Uh, the, they want to know what are the variables for the graph and describe how they're related at various points on the graph. So my variables, my independent variable is time. My dependent variable is number of handbags. And I got that information by looking at the axis labels. Time is here, number of handbags. Um, now let's look at see how they're related. As you can see, time is occurring here, but nothing is changing in terms of the number of handbags, and all of a sudden, it pops up one. And then more time, more time, more time, pops up one. More time, more time, it pops up one. So really, the relationship is that Mandy works on the handbags for a period of time completes one and then starts another And at the end, you might even want to say, because it has this extension here, that either she's working on a much more complicated one, or it's possible that she's done for the day. So you may say, like, she goes home. But that's a relationship. She's working on them, she's working on them, she's working on them, they're made. She's working on one, she's working on one, she's working on one, it's made, that kind of thing. So the next one that you asked about is number uh, 11. I have a sticky note on my board that tells me. Uh, this question says, uh, you want to see how much money is made by a summer blockbuster in the first four weeks of the release, which graph would uh, best represent the data. Now there's a couple things in play here that you have to understand. First off, we need to know whether it's going to be increasing or decreasing. To do that, we're just going to look at the numbers. As you can see, as these numbers increase for the weeks, the numbers are actually going down, which makes a lot of sense. Like um, big blockbuster style movies like the Avengers will make money in the beginning, but they'll slowly go down, and they tend to go down quickly after the first couple of weeks. That's not always the case, uh, but in this case it is. I mean, the movie made $11 million the first week, and then it dropped all the way down to 700000 so not a lot. Uh, that's a pretty big drop in just a few weeks, but that's normal behavior for a blockbuster. But these numbers are smaller than these numbers, so that means I'm looking for something going down. This one's going up, so that's out. This one's going up, so that's out. Now I'm looking at two that are basically going down. But the reality is, I want to look at them in terms of whether they're going down in, if I were to connect these, and they shouldn't be connected functionally, but we're going to do it just to make, I'm going to do it to make a statement about the shape of the graph. You'll notice that the C is a linear graph, so it has a line, which would mean that the change each week should be the same. So if I take uh, 11,300,000 and subtract 4,500,000, I should get the same as I would if I did uh, 4,500,000 from 1,800,000. But let's see if that works. This gives me $6,800,000. That's a big drop. It's almost it's more than they made in the second week. And then the next one, it would be 2,700,000. And it finally drops all the way down. And I say all the way, like 700,000 is just, you know, pocket change or something. Don't I wish. Uh, 1,100,000. So you can see the amount it changes every week, considering this, these are going down by one is not linear, it's not the same. So the answer that you would pick for this one would be D, because it's going down a lot here, and then all of a sudden it starts to go down less and less. It'll peter off to uh, uh, probably a few more weeks, and then it'll just take it out of theaters. Now, uh, number 14. Number 14 is relatively easy if you know um, a, what a specific set of numbers looks like. So what I'm going to do is make a table out of the information. So 1 and 9, 2 and 16, 3 and 25, 4 and 36, 5 and 49. 
Now, when I go back and do this next semester, I'm actually going to have the class create a list of the squares and cubes just so people have seen them before. Because I know immediately that 9, 6, 25, 36, and 49 do are related in some way. And it's that they're squares. 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared, 6 squared, and 7 squared. Now, the relationship they really want me to look for is here. Like, how do you go from 1 to 3 squared? Well, if I add 2 to 1 and then put a squared on it, that works. So, in this case, B says, if I have 1 and I add 2 to it and then square it, it should give me the right answer. This is my X, by the way, and this is my Y. So, that's my answer right there, because if I plug in a 3 for X, 3 plus 2 is 5, and then I square it and I get 25. What else you could do if that doesn't make any sense is make like a little chart maybe and then I'm just going to tr start plugging them in when I plug in 1 I should get 9 based on the answer choices so for a I would do y is equal to 1 squared so in this case y is 1 but when I plugged in this 1 I should have gotten this 9 right here and I didn't so I know that's not the right answer for the one that we said yeah that works for b uh, I would plug in a 1 for the first one add 2 to that and square it. Well, 1 plus 2 is 3 squared, so I'd get 9. I plugged in 1 and got 9, so that works. Usually you want to try them a couple times, because sometimes the first one worked for more than 1. Uh, so I'd plug in 2, and when I plug in 2, I'm looking to get 16, by the way. Uh, 4 squared is 16. So I plugged in 2 and got 16, plugged in 1 and got 9. I can say that, yeah, B is the correct answer. If you did C and D in this plug-in style, they won't work either. Because like D, you'd plug in a 1 for the first one. 2 times 1 is 2 and not 9. So that's how that one works. It's not really that complicated. Uh, and you can get either one of those ways. or there's, I'm sure there's others as well. Um, number 17. Number 17 says a taxi company charges passengers a dollar for a ride and an additional 20 cents for each mile traveled. Now the cool thing uh, mathematically is that they give you the rule and they want you to describe which one of these matches what it's supposed to be. What I'm going to do is I know that the M values on the or the plug-in values for my input would be the miles. And they want to say, okay, what if it only goes to 40 miles? So if any of these go past 40, I know not to use it. I'm actually going to say, you know, okay, I'm going to plug in 10, and I'm going to plug in 20, and I'm going to plug in 30, and I'm going to plug in 40 to see what those values are and see if I can make a graph out of it. So I'm going to take my equation, 0.20m, and I'm going to plug in 10, and plus $1. Um, so, by the way, multiplying by 0.2, which is 1 fifth, is the same as dividing by 5. So I know that 10 divided by uh, 5 is 2, so 2 plus 1 equals 3. So when I plug in 10 miles, I should get $3. Uh, when I do the same thing for 20, that would be um, 4 plus 1 or 5. So when I plug in 20, I get 5. When I plug in 30, incidentally enough, I get uh, 7, I do believe, because that would be 30 divided by 5, which is 6 plus 1 more is 7. Yep. And when I plug in 40, I should get 9. I don't know why I wrote 8 there. 40 and 9. So I'm going to plot these points. So I'm going to find out where 10 and 3 is. So that one looks good. That one looks good. This one looks good. And this one looks good. Also, if I do 20 and 5, so 5 should be right here. So that one looks fine. This one looks okay. 20 and 5, so that looks good. And 20 and 5, I'm okay with that. Uh, 30 and 7. 30 and 7, okay. 30 and 7. 30 and 7, and 30 and 7. Um, so that looks good, and then I do 40, which would be 40 and 9. But they're all the same, right? That's where I want you to start when you do them other ways. But in this case, it says that you the maximum amount that you can do is 40 miles. So anything that goes past 40, we're going to mark out. See how this one goes past 40? It's out. See how this one goes past 40? That's out. So really, I'm making a statement between these two things. Well, what happens if I don't take any miles? I just sit in the cab for a second. 
I'm still paying a dollar. This is the only one that goes with that situation. This one, you have to go 10 miles. There's no restriction that I have to go 10 miles. I can go as many miles as I want as long as it's not more than 40. So my answer to number 17 is C, just based on how the graphs are set up. But I did want to show you the plug-in style because it comes in handy in lots of different problems. So I sort of tricked you, not to, for a bad reason, but just so you'd know. Number 18, um, they want to know if I have seven cups of flour and it takes one cup to make 24 cookies. The function rule, anytime they give you a function rule, you probably want to do something where you highlight it or whatever in your head or at least write it down somewhere so you know that okay that's the rule that I'm going to use. They're saying um, what is the domain and range that are reasonable for the function. Now the idea of reasonable domain and range is okay I have up to seven cups of flour. So my domain would be the input value. So my input value here is flowers. You can't input cookies and make flour. It doesn't work. So I can have anywhere from seven cups of flour all the way down to absolutely nothing and my flower is represented by the letter F so here and here like you don't have to make cookies you can just say I'm not making any cookies I'm not burning flour to make cookies anyway I'm gonna make a cake or whatever so zero is the minimum the range value would be the output so that would be the C sub F how much um, how many cookies you can make so from here the mo the least cookies I can make is none but it tells me that 24 times 7 or whatever the number of amount of flour I can get will tell me the maximum. So 148 is about as much as I can make. I don't know what I was thinking here. I don't know why I put 14. I meant to put 16. Sorry. 168. And that looks terrible. So that's the most I can make. A lot of times your ma minimum uh, value for domain will be have an X here and have a Y here. It just shows what it looks like on the graph. So what I'm going to look for is this exact answer. I, I'm thinking C is looking pretty good because I have I could use no flour and make no cookies. I can use all my flour and make 168 cookies and the graph tends to meet that criteria so I'm going to say that the answer is C. So when you do a domain find your X equivalent in this case the thing you have to put into it and find out what the least you can use is is the most usually the least is nothing and then think about what the maximum amount you can get out of it. If you use all that flour, how many cookies can you make? That kind of tracks it in nicely. So that's uh, number 18 and the last one that you asked for was number 46. And I'm going to try to jump down there quickly. It probably won't work very well, but I said I was going to try to do it. Okay, uh, the question wants to know if this sequence is arithmetic, which means does it go up by the same amount every time? So I do two and uh, I need to see if there's a common difference, which is does it go up or down by the same amount? Well, it's going up, so I know anything that was negative would be out. So that's out because it's not going down. The numbers are getting bigger. In order to figure out what the arithmetic sequence is or what the common difference is, I can just think in my head, okay, well, if I add a fourth and add another fourth, it's two fourths, so it's one half. Add another fourth to that, it'd be three fourths. So, okay, I know what it is. Or you could do a subtraction. You have to start with the number on the right and, mul and subtract the number on the left. So two and one fourth minus two gives you one fourth. Uh, two and one half minus two and one fourth will give you one-fourth as well. If you're not like a super fractions person at this point, I'll see if I can get the calculator emulator to pop up really quickly. So you actually can put in two and one-fourth and two and one-half into the calculator. You go to, I'll turn it on first, and then you go to two and, you go to alpha, the green button, and y equals, and right here there's this UND thing. That's the mixed number. So two and one half minus same thing alpha y equals number two two and one fourth so as you can see it's going up by a fourth every single time so I'm going to say yes it's arithmetic because I found out that two of them work just the way they were supposed to work it goes up one fourth, one fourth, and if you add the, if you track these two, you get one fourth again. So yes, it's arithmetic, uh, and it goes up by one fourth. So that's number forty-six. It would be no, by the way, if the numbers you subtracted came out to be different numbers. Just make sure that you're being very careful. And uh, that's it. Hopefully, this helped.